So this is the result we get. It is really nice. It can be used for a lot of different kind of things. So if you have some different kind of like, for example, white background here and you want to align some point clouds on top of each other with some lines or some different kind of objects. Hey guys, I'm welcome to a new video in this point cloud tutorial. In this video here, we're going to do post estimation of two point clouds um, with actually like using both point clouds, but also the colors. So in previous videos, we've been over how we can actually like use global registration to find poses of different kind of po point clouds. How we can actually like use post estimation to align point clouds or like find a pose of an object in a specific point cloud. And then in this video here, we're both going to use the point cloud with the X, Y and the C coordinate. And then we're also going to use the colors to do global registration to align point clouds. But first of all, when we join the Discord server, I'll link to it down in the description here. You can join the channel, shadows about computer vision, deep learning, AI and so on. You can also become a member of the channel for a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you have some problems in your own projects or applications, go become a member. I can help you out and give you some guidance and so on. So thank you guys. So right now we'll just jump straight into the code here and do point cloud registration with both like the X, Y, and C coordinate, but also the col colors in our actual like point cloud. So we actually have more information that we can do global registration on. So our results would actually be better than just using global registration or like ICP to refine um, a global or like re refine a, a global registration uh, or something like that. Or if we have an initial pose or like an initial guess of our actual like transformation from one point cloud to the other, or if you want to do pose estimation of an object in a scene, if I already have like an, a good initial guess, we can just directly use ICP. But if we don't have that, we will use global registration first of all. And now we're going to use it with colors uh, with uh, with the corresponding X, Y, and C uh, coordinates with the corresponding colors. So here again, we're just going as in the other videos here in this um, point cloud tutorial, we're going to import different kind of modules. Again, we're using Open3D, which is a really nice, uh, really nice library here for doing processing of 3D data and so on. We're going to create a lot more videos about uh, how we can use this Open3D and get all the functions methods that we can do. We're also going to take a look at the machine learning library that Open3D provide, where we can do different kind of stuff like autonomous driving, have some data sets, train the data sets, or like train some models on data sets. And then we can actually like have environments, uh, reconstruct environments, drive around in environments and, and do segmentation of different kind of objects and so on. So we can do a lot of things with Open3D here, but in this video, we're doing color point cloud registration. First of all, we're just going to import a different kind of modules and also the interactive window here uh, that is provided so we can actually like play around with the point clouds when we're visualizing them. So now down here, we can see that we're now going to do color point cloud registration. So this tutorial here just demonstrates ICP variant that use both like geometry and also the color for registration. So we have a lot more info. We have like three more values uh, of information, information instead of only using the geometry, which is the X, Y, and C coordinate. Also, maybe if you use some uh, normals and stuff like that, uh, we also have some more info, but now we also have color info and we want to map that into another point cloud so we can actually align them. So we're both aligning them in the, in the geometry, like in the points, but also with the colors. So here we can just see the, the algorithm that it implements. And here we can see that the color information locks the alignment along the tangent plane. So this algorithm here is more accurate, and more robust prior to the cloud uh, point cloud registration that we talked about in the previous videos. And we can also see that the running speed is actually comparable to ICP registration. So it's both really fast, really efficient, um, and it's just really robust solution where we're yeah, using a lot more information than just standard or like original uh, global registration and ICP. So down here we have some, first of all, we have some helper functions so we can just visualize our point cloud. We take in a source point cloud and also a target point cloud. So we have a source, to source point cloud that we want to find the transformation on. So how we can actually like align it to our target point cloud. Let's say we have an object that we want to find the pose of in the scene. Then our source point cloud would actually like be the, the, the object that we want to find in the scene. And then the target would actually like be our scene. So we try to map that object to our scene to find a transformation. So we also pass in a transformation here, like an initial transformation. So first of all here, we're just making a deep copy of our source point cloud. Then we're transforming our source point cloud here with this transformation. So we actually like you're going to use the same we're going to use the same point cloud in this example, but then we're just using a transformation to actually like disalign the point clouds. And then we try to use global registration with colors to actually like find that transformation back again. So we can align our point clouds. So it could also be that you have two different kind of point clouds and you just want to align them. Then you won't need to use the transformation here, but it's just to like use it in this tutorial here and for demonstration purposes. 
So this is just a helper function. As we say, we're just going to run this block of code. So now we're down here, we can actually like pass in our input. So the code here below it just reads in as source point cloud and the target point cloud. And we're just going to use these point clouds that is already provide, provided by Open3D. So if you just, just go into Open3D's GitHub, you can download all of this data here that we've been using throughout this Open3D tutorial. And then we can see here that an identity matrix here is used um, as the like initialization for the registration. So we're just going to have a, a transformation matrix here with ones in the diagonal. And then we're just going to have our draw registration results um, with our original color. We pass in the source and the target. And then we actually like do this transformation here uh, with our identity matrix. So we're just going to run this block of code. We will load in the point cloud and then we will also visualize them. So this is the two point clouds. We can see that we have the first one here and we have the second one here. And then we can just see we have applied this transformation. So the point clouds um, are not aligned anymore. The purpose here of doing registration, look global registration with uh, color is to actually like align these point clouds here again. So we want to map these green lines here in the background or in the second point cloud to the ones here in the foreground or like the other point cloud that we have. So now because we're using colors in our global registration, we actually have more info and we get a more and better and more robust uh, solution here when we actually like doing this registration or like finding the transformation um, where we can align this point cloud to this point cloud because now we can map the colors as well and not only the geometry so we have a lot more information that we can use in our in our algorithms so down here we're just going to use point to plane icp we've been through what these different kind of methods here does so we want to go into details if you want to know more about like icp how it works and so on and see some more examples on that make sure to check those videos out here in the point cloud tutorial so again here we're just going to run this point to plane icp algorithm and we just set it up here as in the previous video. So first of all here, we just have this um, registration, ICP registration is applied to original point. So we can actually like refine the two, uh, two, two, two point clouds. So we align them again. We need to set up a distance threshold between the points. So when it, when are the points actually like uh, aligned, we're setting up a threshold for that. Then we store results in this variable results underscore ICP. We're just going to o O3D here and then we go into the pipelines registration and then we can just call registration icp then we need to pass in the source point cloud the target point cloud and then the distance threshold we also pass in the current transformation that we applied to our point cloud so the one that we just did up here in our hebel function just to visualize what is going on then we need to pass in the, the algorithm that we want to use or like the approach that we want to use so again we just go into the pipelines registration inside of registration we just have this transformation estimation point to point so we want to estimate a transformation from a point to a plane as we just went over in the start of this video here so this is the an algorithm that we're going to use with this distance threshold on these two point clouds then we're just going to print the result here that we get from icp and then we're just going to draw them out here again together with our transformation so the results here from icp we would like to like have all the results stored in here and then we have an attribute here or like a variable that is called the transformation it will just return the transformation matrix from the source source point cloud to the target point cloud when we have actually like done this icp and have aligned our point clouds again so now when i run this block of code here we will actually like run the algorithm and we will align the two point clouds so now we can see here that the two point cloud is actually aligned but now we can see here that they are not perfectly aligned um, in the colors we, all, we have only aligned them in the 3D geometry right now. We can see that all the points lay on top of each other, but we can see that we have still have some screw here. Like it is still not exactly on top of each other, even though the point clouds are now, now combined. We can see that the green lines here is not on top of each other because we're not using global registration uh, with color yet. We're just using the standard ICP that we went over in the previous videos. So now we're going to do it with colors together with the geometry. So now we have much more information about each of the individual points in our point cloud and now we would like like be able to align all of these uh, lines here together with all the points in our point cloud by using the information about the color as well so now we'll scroll down here and we can see that we have this color point cloud registration the idea behind this is kind of the same as the point to plane icp here but now we're just taking the the rgb values into our account as well you can see here what it actually like just implements this algorithm and you can also see um, the research paper so you can go into there for more details if you want to know exactly what is going on and how these values here is actually like calculated uh, before it's doing this point to plane ICP. So now we can go down here for, for a code for actually like doing 
uh, color point cloud registration. So first of all here, we're just going to set up a for loop running through three times. So we're just going to act like iterate through this process here of aligning our point cloud. So need, first of all, we set up some different kind of voxel radius uh, that we want to run through. And we also set up the maximum number of, the, of iterations that we want to run our ICP algorithm through. Then we set the current transformation here uh, equal to the identity matrix again. So we're starting with the same uh, we're just starting at the same baseline as in the previous example that I just showed you where we want where we weren't able to actually like align the point clouds with the colors or like the green lines. But now we're just going to like actually set up some different kind of parameters and then we're just going to take it like one step at a time and try to get closer and code closer to the results. So here we just have a for loop. We're running it through three times with these three, uh, three different kind of values. So first of all, we just set up the, the, the iterations, the ranges, the source uh, downsampled point cloud and also the target downsampled point cloud. So we're going to use box and downsampling as we went over in the first video in this uh, point cloud tutorial, how we can actually like downsample a point cloud so we don't have that many points in our point cloud because often, often it's just redundant and it's not necessary to have like all your points in your point cloud. So we're actually going to, to, to downsample it so we have less points in our point cloud. Then after we have downsampled our point cloud, we go down and estimate the normals. We just call this KD tree, tree search pyramid hybrid. Then we just set the ranges here equal to the ranges that we have up in the uh, in this voxel ranges, or like the ranges here that we calculated with the voxel uh, ranges for each of the iterations or like the scales that we're running through in this for loop. We also set the maximum number of like nearest neighbors that we want to find here when we're estimating the normals to each of the individual points in our point cloud. So if you have, if you don't down down your point cloud, it will just take longer time to actually like process all of these things because we need to estimate the normals first before we actually like doing global uh, registration because it both uses that information. It uses the X, Y, and C coordinates. And now we're also using the colors uh, together with all of these different kind of informations about the geometry. So down here, we can actually just apply the colored point cloud registration exactly the same as we just did in the previous example. The only difference here is that we call this transformation estimation for colored ICP instead of just for ICP. We also need up to set up an ICP convergence criteria. So we just set up some relative fitness score here, relative uh, root mean square error here that we're calculating. And then we set the max iterations to equal to the iterations that we have up here um, in our list that we're running through in each of the time. Uh, in our for loop. So these are just the fitness score and the error that we're calculating to actually like know how close are we to actually like have converged. And when we have actually like aligned the two points cloud, cloud, cloud together, then we will just stop the ICP uh, because then we have the, the, the correct result. Then we're just going to set the current transformation equal to result ICP, the transformation. So next time we run through a for loop, we have now the new transformation and we will start from that as a baseline. So we're just having this iterating process where we just like get one step closer to the actual like alignment of the point cloud. Then we run through the for loop, downscale some of the values here that we have in our voxel ranges, but also the maximum number of iterations that we want to run our ICP algorithm for. So we just go over step by step and then at the end here we will have this result ICP done transformation which will be the results after we've been through this for loop uh, three times. We just print out or like we just sh display our source point cloud and our target point cloud after we apply this transformation matrix here uh, to it. So now we're going to run this block of code here. It will do all of the things. We can see that the point cloud is now perfectly aligned with all the green lines here as we, as we saw in the last example where they were still like screwed Fairly, fairly, fairly far away from each other still, but now when we're using color point, point cloud registration, we have more information and we're actually like able to align the point clouds here perfectly on top of each other. So this is the result we get. It is really nice. It can be used for a lot of different kind of things. So if you have some different kind of like, for example, white background here and you want to align some point clouds on top of each other with some lines or some different kind of objects, make sure to just use color point cloud registration instead of the ordinary one because it is still really robust accurate and also very fast compared to like just using standard ICP. So here we're just printing out some of the information. We're printing out the different kind of like parameters that we're running through in our for loop. And then we'll also get the, the fitness score, the root mean square error, and also the correspondence set. So how many correspondences do we actually like find in the point clouds? And we can see here the closer we actually like come to the, to the true result or like the true alignment of the point cloud, we can see that we have more corresponding points in the two point clouds that we're actually like matching to each other. We end up here with almost 25,000 point, uh, points 
aligned perfectly in the point cloud because we're using this colored ICP method. So that is what is really here, guys. We've been through how we can use color point point cloud registration to get a more precise and accurate result when we're actually like dealing with point clouds and we want to align them. And we have some information about the colors that we can actually like use for something. We also made videos about just standard global registration, ICP, all the other different kind of inf uh, like methods and operations that we can do in point clouds. Downstream will then remove outliers, do segmentation of different kind of objects. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Also like the video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently also doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about like basic image operations, camera calibration, stereo vision to get depth information in the image. So we can actually like combine stereo vision together with point clouds or like create point clouds from stereo vision, then import it here in Open4D and use it for a lot of different kind of things and applications. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else I'll see you next video guys. Bye for now.